Hey there, happy Monday. Look what I got here. Stuff. Let's bring in the one that rattles first. It says connector. Let's see what connector is. Oh, it's those crimp ferrules. Okay. Good. I've been hoping that those would show up soon because I got, um, where is it here? I got the tool a while ago and I ordered them at the same time. So now we can play. But first, let's go check the listing. 400 pieces, electrical wire, crimping connector, insulated cord pin, terminals, ferrules, kit. Got this one from QQ1281. Just some random seller, I guess, that had the cheapest price. I paid $5.85 and no shipping, of course. So the 400 uh, comes in wire gauges between 22 and 10 or with their code numbers, 100 pieces each of these two, and then 50 pieces each of these two, and 25 pieces each of these ones. I don't know what these model numbers translate to exactly, but I'll just make them fit. Oh, hello, here we go. Um, there's the different... Okay, so there's the different sizes in metric, not AWG. As metric as I am, I'm, I still do my wire in AWG because that's all it's available around here. Um, not the, uh, the metric sizes. So, oh, I see the smallest ones, which they claimed were 22 gauge are slightly different length. Okay. And there's different lengths at a couple of the different diameters. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, let's play. But first, I guess the reason for these things is when you're screwing stranded wire down under screw terminals like these or these little guys here, probably not these. These ones you'd use crimp on fork terminals, but maybe these guys. Um, when you screw them down, the, the wire flattens out and spreads out and gets all unruly and also it uh, just gets all pokey and weird and doesn't want to always go in place where you want it. So the problem that these guys solve is that they keep all the strands. Where's this one? They keep all the strands. Yeah, you can see those strands are all splayed out. They keep all the strands in organized fashion so that when you put them in to uh to your scoop terminal they're not all flailing all over the place and causing random short circuits so this red one or this wire here is 22 gauge and so we'll just crimp him down there so there it is crimped makes little divots in all four sides and that's uh, that's not coming out now since I had that cut a little bit long just trim it off where it comes at the end and then if I'm putting it into a terminal block it can just go right in without flailing all over the place assuming that you've opened the terminal block up first And there it goes with no uh, no stray strands anywhere. Nice, firm, and it doesn't squash out of the way when you put that down. So now after trying the smallest one, let's try the biggest wire that I've got handy, which is 12 gauge. This claims to go up to 10 gauge, but uh, we'll try it with 12. And yeah, it, it fits over there, nice and loose. Um, let's try it with one of the shorter ones here. So again, it, okay. So the little insulating sleeve goes up to there. And we put the self-adjusting crimper on. And give her what for. So now that guy has solidly crimped down square. And again, it's not coming off. Actually, it does move a little bit. Let me just 
give that what for and see if I can actually pull it out. Oh. Okay, so using the 10 gauge one with 12 gauge wire isn't the best option. Let me jam that back on there again if I can. And hit it one more time. Maybe I'll go dig. No, I'll just go square on. Okay, that's fairly firm this time. But that is too big for any of the terminals that I've got. Let's see what happens if I try and put it underneath one of these screws. And again, this isn't the right application for it. It would be more for this kind of terminal here, but... Never learn anything if you don't experiment. No, that's not the kind of crimp you want for that. For this kind of screw block, you want this sort of crimp terminal, a fork that just goes under there. And I think this one goes up to 14 gauge, which is, do I have a piece of 14 gauge? Yes, I do. So for that, you'd use a crimp terminal sort of like this. Well, this, is there a 14 gauge in here? No, there's a bunch of smaller gauge ones. What is this one? Does it work with 18? It looks like about right. Let's try it. So if that's the long one, let's try the short one, which is the yellow. Yeah, you see all those strands are kind of frayed and out of sorts. Well, that's the problem that, this, that these things solve. There we go. Crimp. Nice and solid. Trim flush. Done. Now you can put it into a block like this and run it down. So that's 18 gauge. Nice. Okay, what's next? How about this guy? It says, call it. Hmm. partially opened it this uh oh that didn't feel good that felt so oh hello battery holders lots of battery holders two four six eight battery holders those are i believe 18650 yes those are 18650 battery holders good i was running short on those Four pieces, plastic battery holder, case, storage box, and wire leads for one by 18650 battery. I paid $1.32 for four of them. Actually, I paid $2.65 for eight of them, so I bought two of this lot from Enjoy Fashion... What is this? Enjoy Fashionable Top. Okay. And there's nothing too amazing about these. They're just battery holders with wires okay next we have one times adapter oh it's one of those ultrasonic modules hmm I've already got another one of these around here somewhere don't I and by one I mean actually two and these ones well, this one is a slightly different one. This one's got the crystal on the front and slightly different chips on the back of it. Okay. Hmm. But the part number is the same, HCSR04. Hmm, I wonder if... I don't think those are different functionally. I think the other type has a different pin count on it, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to look back at my video about uh, when I was tinkering with these things. But in the meantime, ultrasonic HCSR04, HCSR04P, distance measuring sonar sensor module for Arduino. I bought this one from Wise Kitty, who is not currently selling anything. I got it at auction for 80 cents, which is why I bought it, because... Current going price is buck forty and up. Here's one of those listings from World Chips, who I bought before, but not this thing. Um, what is the difference between them? 
Oh, okay, so the P version doesn't have the crystal on the front, and just the base 04 version does have the crystal on the front. Okay, I learned something. But if you want to see more about uh, these ultrasonic sensors, I've got a video back several months when I was tinkering with them. Um, I'll put the link up in the corner here as usual. And uh, yeah, in the description of this video, I will put a search that finds a whole bunch of them since buddy that I bought it from no longer sells a damn thing. Okay, we have battery pack. Uh, hmm, I already had some battery packs, so I wonder what these ones are. These ones are exactly the same thing. Yeah, just more 18650 battery holders with wires. I wonder why I got singles. I guess, I mean, there's no reason not to use singles because you can just gang them up and series them into whatever you need, so... I'm assuming that I got these cheap as well. This is a pack of five of them. Listing time. Portable five pieces battery case. Holder storage box for one by 18 650 rechargeable battery. This bunch came from Good Jewelry 8. Um, they're currently selling from them for 236 I bought these at auction for $2.02 .02 from them. And they're pretty much the same as the other ones. Not sure why I paid two bucks for these ones and and uh, 260 for almost twice as many of the other ones. I bought them on different days, I guess. Maybe I bought the other ones before I found these ones on auction. I don't know. All right, time for the big one. What do we have in here? This one was shipped from within Canada, but as usual, this would have been bought from a Chinese seller just because, oh, cheapness, basically. All right. Um, the Canadian sellers have to pay tax and Canadian shipping and stuff. The Chinese sellers, even though they're selling shipping from inside Canada, don't for some reason. Wow. Adjustable soldering clamp holder. Four different thicknesses. Max clamp up to 200 millimeters. Oh, cool. I've been... I'd forgotten that I ordered this, but as you probably know, if you've been watching, I've been searching for different ways to hold circuit boards while I'm soldering. This being probably the most professional that I've, uh, that I've explored so far. Let's see, uh, what I paid for this thing and get out of the box and play with it. Adjustable PC board, printed circuit board, soldering assembly, holder clamp tool. I didn't buy it from this guy. I bought it from Northern Swallow 2012. I paid $19.76. This is currently the dude who's selling it for cheapest at $19.99. However, I'm going to link to a search um, that finds you a bunch of different sellers for these things. It says plastic holder plus metal base can hold PCBs up to 200 by 140 millimeters. Uh, can hold 1.2, 1.82, or 3 millimeter circuit boards. And the overall thing is 300 by 165 by 125 millimeters. Bottom is equipped with rubber gasket to stabilize and no shaking. 360 degrees of rotation. Can easily be fixed in position, etc., etc. Designed to clamp. Yeah. For once, I actually get to do a real unboxing. Normally, it's just unbagging. Oh. Out of the box. One piece, not two pieces. Arr, three pieces. Nothing else in the box. A manual, which is written Chinese and English. Very nice. All the same things that it says on the uh, listing. Okay. Uh, Sliding piece, sliding piece, bar, feet. Ooh, with rubber feet. Nice. Okay, so those screw onto there. That slides onto there. That grabs the boards. I will commence to screw in here.
see there's one that slides oh there's a little set screw on this side that is a metal set screw too with a little plastic knob okay goes together fairly easily and there we go that's pretty reasonable actually so there's a set screw here to lock the rotation a set screw here to lock the rotation and the springiness I better get some circuit boards Okay, let's start with this one this is a board out of a printer so lock the rotation That's not bad. You could definitely work on that. And the only problem with working with a big board is you have to grab it kind of offset by the looks of it here. If you want to swing it over. But you can definitely work on that. And stop that up. Yeah, as long as you're working close to where the pivot is, it's not going anywhere. That's not bad. Let's see how it handles something really tiny. Okay. There's a really tiny little board. And let's, uh, let's throw a component into there. Where's that big capacitor? Ah. That big capacitor goes down there. And that's not going to fit because of the grippers. So what happens if we flip this over? Okay. Definitely fits now. Put that cap in there. Spin it over. Get a pseudo soldering iron in there. Hmm, that should work pretty well. That seems like a fairly professional item. Except for, oh, that, that plastic's not that, that crappy. It seems to hold everything fairly solidly. You can get a good push on it takes quite a bit to push it up okay I think that's gonna be a good addition to the fleet of soldering board holders and there's this week's uh, mailbag Monday goodies in all their glory so shipping times the 18650 holders one batch took 23 days and one batch took seven weeks strange um the soldering board holder took six weeks to get here the ultrasonic distance sensor took six weeks to get here and the crimp ferrules took ten and a half weeks these all happened in so the last quarter of uh, 2018 um so that's christmas time shipping's busy and slow and weird and random apparently okay so a combination of shop stock and uh, and this cool tool. I'm gonna I'm gonna put get some use out of these. I'm sure. Thanks for watching. Um, if you've got anything you want to comment on, please leave it down in the comment section down in the bottom there. Links as always in the description. And a special thanks as always to my Patreon supporters for helping me finance my addiction. I will talk to you later, guys.